Hello, this is Mickey Moore, uh, your host of Run Life Today. Welcome to our first episode, season two. <laughs> Excited to have Brady Irwin, a good friend of mine. Hey, Brady. Hey, Mickey. Thanks for having me on today. Yep. Uh, excited to have Brady here with us, everybody. And as usual, we're going to walk through the lanes of work and life. And I can't wait for Brady to share his tips on the better integration uh, of work and life. And, you know, for all the listeners out there, thank you for a successful season number one. Uh, all of those episodes are on our website, runlifetoday.org. So visit the website, like us, watch us, follow us, all that good stuff and subscribe. Um, Brady gets that, and then I'm sure he'll pitch a little bit about science and speed in a few minutes, and that's good too. Uh, but again, we're excited to be in our second season, and uh, let me get back to Brady, and we can we can kick this off. So uh, Brady, you and I have known each other for a short period of time, but mm -hmm. I think we've known of each other for maybe a longer period of time. Right. Um, you know, as I like to do in the beginning of these these conversations is just give you a chance just to give us a little background, right? So kind of where you're from a little bit, um, you know, where you grew up, kind of take us through your your educational years, if you will. And then okay. we'll get into that career in some other lanes. So okay. Brady, tell us a little background, man. Yeah, um, so I'm a Kansas boy, born and raised. Uh, grew up in Topeka, Kansas and, um, you know, ran through high school and then went off to college and raced bikes in college. Went to Kansas State University and uh, got my degree in kinesiology, which if you're not aware is um, pretty much an exercise physiology with an emphasis in biomechanics. Okay, now, now, so, okay, Kansas guy, I almost said rock chalk Jayhawk. I'm glad I did. Oh, Ema, every <laughs> man a wildcat. <laughs> Because that would have been a bad start to our conversation. So That's I'm right. Glad. I'll just sign out now, Mickey. <laughs> I'm glad I helped that in. Okay. But no, I mean, really, when you choose, you know, K-State versus Kansas, what's mm -hmm. the determinant there? Um, you know, at 18, I couldn't have really told you what the determining factor was. Yeah. Um, hindsight, the program that I got into was a better program for me. It ended up being the better solution. Um, and yeah, it ended up... It, I would say more than anything, cultural, culturally, it was a better fit for me. So I compare it to kind of UF and FSU for the locals around the around the Tallahassee region. It's kind of that difference almost. So, yeah. Nice play. I like yeah. that. I'm going to have to agree with you. Go K-State. So, <laughs> and I'm going to back you up here and there because uh, when I say a brief background, I almost want to slow down a little bit. So uh, family, brother, brother, sisters, siblings. Yeah, I have an older sister. Um, she still lives in Kansas. She's actually in Salina, and she is a, a teacher there. So she's married to a gentleman who works for a series of churches. They are the largest satellite church, or one of the largest satellite church organizations in the U.S. So it's it's interesting. Kind of a, you think Midwest, why? But mm -hmm. you think of all the remote locations, and they kind of have to spread their net a little bit better. And mom and dad, what what they do? Um, dad worked at a, as a manager at a grocery store while I was growing up, and my mom stayed at home with us through our formative years. And then as we got older, she went off and uh, worked for an oral surgeon for a couple years as well. Okay, so last question about that little upbringing in high school. I love mascots. What's your high school mascot? Oh, we had a super lame mascot. Mm. I hate to tell you this. They were the Junior Blues, which you're probably not familiar with Washburn University, but they are the Ichabods. And we're in the same town, and we were supposed to be the junior version of the Ichabods, but I, they called us the Junior Blues for some reason. Think of kind of like Uncle Sam with just a blue top hat. Okay, so yeah. I'm going to agree with you that, you know, out of all my episodes, that's mm -hmm. probably the most special um, yeah. mascot that I've heard. Um, the other one that comes to mind, although not part of the podcast, okay, uh, Bre Presbyterian Fighting Blue Hose. That's terrible. Okay, got it. So, so what does this look like? Breast Presbyterian College, they're Scottish uh -huh. warriors with blue stockings. Ooh, that's rough. Yeah, one of my cousins was football coach there for years, so okay. that's what I know. Okay, yeah. but let me get back. Now, kinesiology, <laughs> Yes. Okay. So tell me why that field, what got you in there, what was the interest in going that path? Um, you know, to be honest, I started off mechanical engineering. And after I got through Calc 1 and 2 and differential equations and on to Calc 3, 
and then a bunch of computer aided drafting design classes. I decided I didn't want to do that at all. Um, you know, I, I was something I did in high school and loved it then. And then the more and more I got into it, the less I liked it. So um, after about uh, two years of doing that, I switched and, um, you know, kind of had a little period there where I'm like, I don't know what I want to do. And I love racing bikes. I loved, you know, just what the human body could perform um, and how you could change it and, and make it adapt to what you wanted it to do. And so that was kind of the transition there. Um, you know, as I was going through the program, I looked a little bit at physical therapy and worked at a PT clinic for a while and didn't want to work in the geriatric field my entire life. Um, and then I didn't want to travel with a team as much as, um, you know, they, they're on the road. I knew I wanted to get married and settle down eventually. And I had a friend that moved out to Colorado and was like, hey, I'm doing endurance coaching here for a company called Carmichael Training Systems. Is this something you're interested in? And this was about a year from graduation. So kind of talked to him of what his day to day looked like and what the job looked like. And that's the route I ended up going eventually. Wow. And when you say uh, racing bikes in college. Now, are you talking about cycling? Are you talking about mountain biking? Both, actually. So cycling, mountain biking, and then cyclocross, which is kind of a road bike where you ride through a field and there's barriers that you dismount, run over the barriers, and hop back on. Okay. So, a little bit of everything. That was your extracurricular activity, your competition, and all of that while you're doing yeah. a regular schooling piece. Okay. Yeah. So we had a club team for the university, and then there was a regional team that I raced on as well. Then. All right. You, so you finished your college. What year? Mm -hmm. Uh, 2006, December of 06. Okay. And then went right to work basically. Um, I waited, my internship didn't start until that summer. So okay. I waited until, uh, my wife and I got married in May. And then as the week after we got married, we moved out and I started my internship in Colorado. So, okay. Yeah. All right. And, and we're certainly going to get to that family lane because mm -hmm. I know you're better half. So we'll have yes. to, you know, we'll have she to is better. I'll give her that. <laughs> Yeah, you and me both. There you go. So, all right. So that's good on the on the little upbringing piece. Thanks for, mm -hmm. for for letting me know there, especially the beginning of you know kind of how you got into the the healthy body, healthy living, and mm -hmm. you know the science of of it. Sorry mm -hmm. to use that word again. Yep. All right. Yep. Now, so let's definitively move into a lane. All right. So yep. let's talk about your business lane, your career lane. And I know you own a company now. It's called Science of Speed. And we want you to be able to talk about that. But yep. give me briefly how it even got to that. Right. Those couple steps along the way professionally yep. that got you to owning your own your own company. Yeah. So um, like I said, originally or a minute ago, I moved to Colorado, worked for a company there that was doing the same thing that I do currently. Um, and worked there for four years. One of the athletes that I had um, lived in the Tallahassee area and he bought a bike shop and said, hey, Brady, I'd love for a business partner to come to join me in this. I can't be there for the day to day and I would love somebody to partner up with me. Would you be interested? And after about nine months of discussions and trips out here and kind of visits to check the place out, uh, we ended up packing up and moving. For anybody moving from Colorado to Florida, never do it in July if you want your spouse to like you. So heads up on that. <laughs> um, so that is how you got to Tallahassee. Good. That's how I got to Tallahassee. And we this July will be 11 years. So it's it's been a good, a good journey so far. Um, but yeah, so that's the how we got here. Over the next eight years, we um, had the one shop here. And then we had up to three shops in Jacksonville as well that we had. Um, and then over a couple of years, about two years ago, I sold my share in the shops and just focused solely on the coaching side of things at that point. All right. So what were the shops again? What were the names? I don't remember. So originally it was Sunshine Cycles when I first moved here. Yeah. And then we rebranded probably about two years after I was here to Bird Legs Bicycles, which Bird yeah. Legs was my nickname in college. Um, and, and then it's, it's right. fitting. I'd show you, but it'd be awkward. So yeah, there's that. Um, and then uh, we had three shops in Jacksonville under the same branding as well. Okay. And can yeah. you divulge the, the other partner, the, the client? Oh yeah. It's yeah. Halsey Bashirs was my business partner at that. Time. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So uh, bird legs, I remember, I think I have a pair of socks from bird legs um, mm -hmm. before I got them, but yeah, in high school, the chemistry teacher said with my legs, I should sing in a choir. Ouch. Okay. So you got that going for you. So I had that, you know, canary yeah. bird legs and a mm -hmm. mine. Yeah. yeah. He, he wasn't very kind. But um, okay, so that's why you got to Florida and then you sold your shares yep. 
So mm -hmm. let's pick it up there. What year was it that you <laughs> sold and then started doing your own deal? So I sold in, let's see, it's 2022 now. So it would have been fall of 19. So right before the boom on bikes and COVID and everything else started. So perfect timing there. Mm -hmm. um, but actually the, the science of speed side and the coaching side has, I just kept, I basically created it as soon as I moved here because I had a handful of athletes that wanted to continue working with me. So I just kept that side of things going. And through those years, it athlete number kind of ebbed and flowed a little bit over time, but it was just, you know, kind of a quote side hustle at that point more than anything else. Okay. So now, now it's full blown. So 10 years, yep, yep, celebrate 10 years now. Congratulations. Thank um, you. It's a good year. So for those that don't know yet, science is speed. <laughs> give me, give me the rundown. Um, yeah. What do you do? What do you mostly do? Who's your best athlete? Well, mm -hmm. not really, I mean, you don't have to talk about me, but you could talk about somebody else. Go ahead. <laughs> so we work with endurance. I've got three other coaches that work for me as well. And we work with endurance athletes ranging from recreational athletes who are just looking to either lose weight or improve their fitness all the way up to elite level athletes. And there are general um, athletes are cyclists, triathletes, runners. And then I have about five motor motorsport athletes. So anything from um, ATV racers to uh, motocross and supercross racers as well. Okay. Any, I mean, any celebrity popular, you know, athletes that you work with that we would know? I mean, mm, any shout out. You know? Currently, no. I would say over the years, one of them that I worked with was Phil Kogan, who is host of The Amazing Race. Okay. So he has done several crazy events. One was a bicycle ride across the U.S. The other one was, and if you haven't seen it, he uh, did a, he's got a video documentary of he retraced the steps of the original Tour de France on a vintage bike. So that's a video that if you haven't watched yet, it's worth it's worth pulling up. Okay. Yeah, we'll yeah. have to connect uh, after this because I, yeah. I wouldn't mind seeing that. Yeah, it's interesting to see just kind of what all goes on and the mechanical issues that occur and everything else. So, yeah. So science of speed. Um, <clears throat> And again, you and I've talked about the business before, and I appreciate yeah. your, your generosity and just being a friend and offering some advice when some people do some silly things with, with not much we training. All, but, we all do it. <laughs> yeah, we all do it. So what's, what is your favorite part of owning your own business and doing what you do? Um, hmm. You know, I would say the favorite part of owning my own business is it gives me some more flexibility in my days. So if my kids have an event that they need to be at or, a, you know, a football game or a volleyball game or anything like that, it gives me some flexibility where as long as I know I can plan ahead and work around it. Um, you know, the thing that I enjoy most about my job in itself is talking with the athletes and seeing them succeed. Um, to me, that's huge. I love being a part of that, you know, journey is what I would consider it or experience for each athlete. And it's just really cool to see them do something, you know, no matter how large or small the scale is, see them do something that they didn't think they could do. And whether it's something uh, that seems as simple as a workout or something that seems as complex or as hard as a, as a big race that they're going to do. I just, I think that's fun. It's neat to be a part of it. Nice. Okay. So 10 years, I mean, mm -hmm. you're halfway to 20. Is that the goal? Halfway right. To 20, yep. You keep doing this, right? Keep doing that's, it. Yeah, that's the goal. Keep doing it. And I, I know there's going to be a, a uh, kind of a life expectancy out of it. So there's, you know, you ask about side hustles a little bit and that's, there are some side hustles that, that are kind of long-term perspective more than anything else. So. Hmm. Okay. So yeah. Um, science speed. And, and again, I'll, I'll share the website and, and all that stuff yeah. once we, uh, you know, get this out there and the episodes on the website. Uh, Cause I, I love what you do, man. So thanks. Um, any other, you know, time and energy on a business thing that you're doing. Any other side hustles you want to share? Yeah. So the other one that I've, that I've uh, got a partner that I work with and we, we look at single family uh, real estate more than anything. So predominantly buy and hold. Um, and then we're, we've got some potential flip and, and wholesale type stuff that we're working on as well. Yeah. Apparently it's a good market for real estate these days. Um, if you can find the right deal, it's only a good market if you pay the right price, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, relative to the deal, right? That's exactly right. The deal's been depending on what you pay for it up front. <laughs> mm, yeah, yeah. I think I still have a townhouse I bought in 2005. Okay. Uh, 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 rental, right? Yeah. It's tempting 
to sell it, but I'm like, ah, never mind. I'll just keep getting the rent. Yeah. yeah. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yep. That's okay. exactly right. So then 20 years science of speed, then you can be full-time realtor after 20 years of doing your own. Okay. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I enjoy this part of it so much that I don't ever want to have to give it up. It's okay. just the the reality of, you know, how long will the body last with it too? Nobody, I always joke with my wife. I'm like, nobody wants a fat coach. <laughs> they don't. <laughs> they call that leading by example. Exactly. That's exactly right. Which is why I was up at, or at the booty crack of dawn on the bike. If you got to yeah. get it done, you got to get it done. Right. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, then that sales 101, right? If you're going to yep. you door to door selling that vacuum, well, do you mm -hmm. use vacuum? Nope. Well, I'm not buying the vacuum you're selling if you're not using it. So that's exactly right. Yep. You got to believe in your product. Okay. All right. Let's move to another lane. Thanks, man. You got it. Um, so let's talk about community. All right. Um, you know, there are things that you and your family care about, right? From a philanthropic standpoint, uh, volunteerism, uh, raising money, serving on boards, whatever it might be. But yeah. share a little bit about your time and energy that you spend in the community, if you would. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, obviously, if fair amount of time in the community for me is, is with fellow athletes. It's with fellow cyclists and, and triathletes and do athletes. So, you know, it's time on the bike or out there running. I mean, you and I were both out there at this, uh, Trent trot. So mm -hmm. this past weekend. So, you know, that's a little bit of both it's, you know, it's business, but it's also supporting a cause that, that you believe in at that point. And you get a little bit of physical activity in it at the same point. So it's great. Um, you know, for us personally, from a philanthropic standpoint, Hank Tough Foundation is something that, uh, my wife founded after our son was diagnosed with leukemia or after he finished his treatment, actually. Um, and that is an organization that, you know, we, we put a lot of time, energy and love into from, you know, to see others, others benefit from what we saw was needed. Mm -hmm. um, so that right now they're almost at 900 kids who have a life altering illness or disability. So in six years, they've gone from two children to 900, which has been awesome to see the growth in that. And I think they serve since they serve the whole family, they're almost at 3,500 people in, in total in this surrounding area that they serve. Wow. And, yeah. and again, because because I'm a little more familiar, right, um, mm -hmm. having been around your wife and, and the way she runs that organization, I knew that that's part of your commitment, too. You're, okay. you're probably unofficial, not on the payroll. <laughs> so, I'm definitely not on the payroll, right. but I'm on the, I'm on the, uh, the work role. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I knew it consumed a lot of your time and, and yeah. it's certainly a very personal thing for y'all. And right. um, so you know, congratulations on nice. the success of Hang Tough Foundation. And yeah. it's while it's one thing that's, wow, look at the numbers they're helping. It's, it's just so sad that you have to help that many people. You know what I mean? Because these kids go through these difficult, challenging, right. you know, health issues. But um, right. thank goodness for y'all. Right. Well, we're, we're glad to do it. And hopefully it's, uh, you know, ultimate vision is that it's, it grows beyond just Tallahassee. So that's, you know, really what what we would love to see is that this same thing can be mirrored and, and applied to other cities and other other communities where that need the help. It's it's apparent. You know, we've had people already reach out from out of state that are wondering how they can they can grow it. But it's just a matter of having the right people to, to steer the ship at that point for each of those. Okay. And then speaking of steering the ship, maybe yeah. I don't know if that's the right way, but apparently you're a pretty good fundraiser or your son is, right? My daughter, actually. Your daughter, is it? Okay. Daughter is, yeah. Okay. She I saw something I'd like, tell us a little bit about the money she's raising. Yeah. So four years ago, <clears throat> she um, had the realization that there was, um, you know, the promotion for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And that they did fundraising for that. And she's like, well, if they do it for that, why can't we do it for kids with pediatric cancer? So she partnered up with um, Dunkin' Donuts here locally. And they were like, we'd love to help you. And they just sold donuts at their elementary school that first year. Um, they did a, a special golden donut that was you know, specific for this event. And um, I think they raised in the first year like $1,000 and then somebody else matched it. So she ended up raising $2,000 in the first year. And then this last year, um, she, I think she scared the owners of Duncan, quite honestly, because she sold thousands of donuts, Time to make and, the donuts. And, and they had to make the donuts. So, yeah. Um, so she ended up raising over $16,000 for three local organizations. One is Hang Tough Foundation, which is ours. 
And then the other is Trent's Touch, which is who the run was for this weekend. And then the final one is the Marshall Fisher Foundation, who Marshall Fisher was a close friend of ours while Grayson was going through treatment. And they started the foundation after he passed away at 18 for minors who are going through cancer treatments. So it's a UF Shands fundraising organization or entity, I guess, at that point. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So sixteen thousand dollars for she's eleven. So if you think you can't do anything, she should be motivation in itself that an eleven year old can raise sixteen thousand dollars in a month for three different organizations. Yeah, no, that's amazing, man. And kudos, yeah. you know, to the family. Again, that's why in this lane, I know that takes time for you yeah. and for your wife too. I have um, to give the credit to my wife on that one. I do very little. <laughs> The family we'll say the family. I'm moral support <laughs> uh, and and how awesome that you've got a corporate you know partner like Duncan that's you know yeah. willing to you know, invest their donuts and time into your daughter and the cause right. you know well and she got another corporate partner this year more bass um said yeah. they would sign on for three years so they're okay. on and board they love it and it's been yeah so she what an 11 year old can do is is pretty impressive when you they put their mind to it well, you know, if there weren't such things as child labor laws, there are some nonprofits who might want to hire her to raise money. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly, exactly right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, all right, there's community lane. Uh, thank yep. you. Um, yeah, you so let me shift to another lane that I know you spend a lot of time and energy in personally, not just with your clients, but mm -hmm. talk about your, you know, active lifestyle, right? Running, yeah. swimming, biking, the things that you do. Um, to keep yourself in shape and active. Right. Right. Yeah. So for me personally, um, I, I run and, and cycle. I do not enjoy swimming. Staring at a lap line for thousands of, of yards does not sound enjoyable to me at all. Um, so cycling and running are my predominant, you know, guilty pleasure and, and abuse at the same point in time, whatever you want to consider that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so it's, it's actually been an interesting kind of journey for me. I've always done those, you know, I ran originally and then switched over to the bike in college and I've kind of gotten back into running over the last couple of years. And, um, you know, last year was a hard hit for me. I had from a previous bike crash, I actually had pinched nerves and I had to take 16 weeks off completely. Um, so the mental side of that for me, I'd never experienced that having to not do what you thoroughly enjoy. And that was, that was tough. So it gave me a lot of empathy, I guess, for people who, who actually have to do that. Um, even for my athletes, I don't have just the suck it up buttercup approach so much anymore. Um, and then, you know, the reality when you take time off, and I think this is where so many people struggle when they get away from an exercise of any sort is, you know, well, I had to take all this time off. I don't know where that time came from for me to be, you know, exercise four hours a week or six hours a week or 12 hours a week, whatever it is. So, um, and then you gain a little weight usually because you're used to eating what you want. So it's, you know, it was, it was interesting, but I'm back at it again, running and riding. Um, and I'll be honest, the last two years have been the most I haven't enjoyed the bike in probably the last 10 years. So it's been, it's been awesome. You know, I'd, I'd done a couple events like race across America and some other big ultra stuff like that. And just the training up to that, it's like, huh, why do I do this? And then, you know, just the fun has come back in the last couple of years, which is great. So. So you're running, biking, what, five days a week, seven days a week now? Um, I try and take two days off. I try and have usually Sundays as a day off. And I like to have usually Tuesdays as a day off. So Tuesday or Wednesday, it just depends on the week and what my training load is. Yeah. Um, right now, I don't have anything on. I take that back. I've got an event in June that's kind of a bigger event that I want to go do. It's a gravel race up in Asheville, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. Um, so really other than that, you know, everything else that I'm doing is kind of fun. So I'll go out and do St. Mark's do Athlon and I'm going to go do some local, you know, gravel rides. And mm -hmm. other than that, I'm, I'm just enjoying it and having some fun riding with friends and yeah, okay. I got Cap to do a 5k with my son this past weekend. So he, it was, it was good. So I can't complain. You, uh, and I think you and I are on the same team for now, right? The capital to the coast thing. Are we doing that? Or I hope so. I haven't heard anything more. So yeah, I've, okay. uh, I've had to kick it in gear because I don't want to disappoint anybody. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the last I heard, uh, Darian, I think his name, he was Darian. thinking we could all do 13 to 15 mile turns and only do one rotation, you know, uh, I didn't hear that. I like that idea. And I was like, oh, okay, whatever. I'll be trained up for a half. That's not a yeah, problem. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I 
I, and I think Asheville, you said gravel race, but I could have sworn you said you were going up there for the breweries. Is that is that what you said? Because they have good beer in Asheville. What, well, it's a brewery tour with a bike ride involved. Is that okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'll I'll handle the luggage. Okay, so. perfect. Sounds great. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Yeah. No. Again, I I, I appreciate um, the way you you've helped me um, over the last you know, 12 to 18 months with advice yeah. here and there on, especially the cycling piece, because yeah. I have no idea what yeah. I was getting into, but um, it's a big switch, isn't it? Go from a single sport athlete to a multi-sport athlete. It's tough. Yeah. That, especially so. that time frame. you go, wait, how did I squeeze in for four months doing three events practicing, yeah. you know, seven days a week. So it's, it's called forgiveness from your family and acceptance is what okay. it is. <laughs> nice transition. So let's transition to another lane. Perfect. Uh, Look at me go. <laughs> you, it's like you've done this before. Yeah. But, um, so the family lane, right? Yes. Um, and if you, you know, faith and family, sometimes I put that together and that's up to you if you want to, you know, talk yeah. about that. But um I know as a parent, family consumes uh, a lot of time and energy. So share with us a little bit about what you and the family do together, you know, uh, where you spend your time um, and faith, if you'd like. Yeah, certainly. Yeah. So, um, a, you know, it's one of those things we have, we both grew up, well, I grew up doing sports. My wife grew up dancing and, and doing drill team in high school. So extracurricular activities is, is important to us. It's, you know, kind of where you find who you are as an individual and learn a little bit of discipline as well. Um, the one thing that we have set up for our kids so it doesn't consume everybody's life is they can each do one sport at a time. Um, and that, you know, it's for us personally, we found that, hey, we can actually go like my daughter has a volleyball tournament on Saturday, but now we'll all get to go to the tournament, watch her compete, and then we can actually spend our, the rest of our weekend not running from one event to the next. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so other than that, when, um, you know, we're not doing something like that and shuttle service or anything there, we spend a lot of time in the backyard, you know, throwing the football, um, playing volleyball, kicking the soccer ball. We've got a German short hair pointer that runs us all to ragged. That um, eats everything in the house. That, yeah. I don't know how that dog finds stuff, but she is a hunter to say the very least. So, yeah. And then, you know, we, uh, we're very heavily involved with uh, city church here in Tallahassee. So we spend, we all spend a lot of time there and, and have spent a lot of time helping out with that at the same time. So, yeah, okay. that's, that's kind of it. We, we, we enjoy spending time together, which makes it fun when you actually like each other. <laughs> yes, that helps, right? It does a lot. <laughs> but again, it's, it's that, well, I won't, I won't give away the best tips. So that'll be your next step, but I appreciate you sharing about your family. And again, it's yeah. a beautiful family and, and your wife is, you know, again, I mean, she works her tail off. So He's a rock I'm, star. Glad, I'm glad to see their hang tough now is back to their, I think she said pre COVID staffing levels, right? And yeah, pre COVID staffing levels. And they have one part time assistant as well. So a little bit more than what they had pre COVID, which is great. Um, awesome. And oh. organization is healthy. So it's that's the best part. They made it through COVID and they're better off than when they went in. So can't argue with that. You can't. Okay. So we've heard a few lanes there, some four or five lanes. Um, yep. Obviously, you got things going on. So I think you qualify as someone who has learned ways to run more of life mm -hmm. than life running you. Mm -hmm. and hence, run life today. Just yep. had to do that to be obvious. So, um, from your perspective, then Brady, give mm -hmm. us some of the best practices, things that have worked for you, for the family, when it comes to being able to integrate work right. in life. Yeah. So, you know, for me personally, I feel like I've had, you know, over the years, I've had a lot of people that I've worked with. And, and let's be honest, the majority of the people that I work with are in their 40s to mid 50s from an athlete standpoint. So, they've experienced a lot of life. So I've had a, a lot of quote mentors over the years that I've been able to learn from. And, um, you know, they're all doctors, a lot of them are doctors, attorneys, business owners of some sort. So they run very busy, very, you know, high stress lives, high energy lives, a lot of times. And, you know, the one thing that I feel like that I've gained from a lot of them is prioritization, you know, and how do you prioritize your life? And for me, it's a notebook that I put in the night before what my next day is going to be item, line item as. Um, and, you know, depending upon the day, it either starts at 5 a.m. or it starts at 6 a.m. It just depends on what it is. But, you know, for me, that's the, the way that I can sit down and I can look at it and I can go, okay, 
here's how my day is going to be scheduled. Now, let's be realistic. Life happens. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like you have a kid that has to come home sick from school. So you have to go pick them up. But that at least helps to get me back on track if I feel like I've deviated. Um, and then, you know, the other thing that that's helped me out with that is, you know, like you mentioned with your with your um, races that you did, your triathlons that you did this summer, of, you know, over those four months, where did all that time come from? And I think that is the biggest thing is, you know, your partner and your family have to be on the same page to make sure that one, there's no animosity and two, that you're able to work together so that you can figure out, okay, who's in charge of the kids? Who's in charge of dinner? What are we doing? And where are we going to be at? And when are we going to be there? Um, and I feel like that's one of the things that's helped us so much over the years is that, you know, we've always gone into it with the approach of, okay, um, now is your time to be selfish, essentially. So get out there, do what you need to do, whether it's in business or life, you know, we kind of look at it from the standpoint of, okay, I'll kind of take a backseat here. You've got 18 months where you know you have to grind and have to get a bunch of stuff done. So let me know how I can help you and how I can kind of push things along and we'll go from there. Um, and for us, that's been, that's been huge is just understanding that each other has the other person's back. Wow. Okay, good tips there. So I, I want to regurgitate a little bit, right, to make sure we got it all and everybody heard it. So prioritization, right? Mm -hmm. So, and wow, like the night before when you said notebook, of course, I first thought about the movie and I was like, wow, how emotional, but that's not what you meant. You, <laughs> oh, no, that's a, what were you, what did you think oh, I meant? Right. That wasn't it. <laughs> crying, kissing, scene in the rain. Right. On the lake. Not that I've never seen, I've never seen the movie. Anyway. <laughs> But you're um, married. You've seen the movie. <laughs> so Rachel McAdams. Anyway. Yes. All right. So, uh, wow. Audrey's going to love this video. So it's eye candy for the female and for the males that's watching it. So who cares? Let's be honest. Okay. All right. Let yeah. me get back to prioritizing. So you prioritize and you plan via the notebook, right? You write things down mm -hmm. and brilliantly is to help you get back on track because yeah right right i mean it's like a strategic plan in business it's a living mm -hmm. breathing document it's mm -hmm. a guide for success right mm -hmm. but you obviously can change it because right things happen every day yeah. so i like the prioritization i like the planning and then the most important though is the partnership uh, mm -hmm. whoever it is right yeah. spouse partner girlfriend boyfriend family whatever mm -hmm. or business right, right. If we're not all playing from the same sheet of music, mm -hmm. it's hard to do it on your own. You cannot manage, integrate five to six lanes of work in life and do it mm -hmm. solamente. You have right. to have some help and support. Right. So, yeah. Okay. That was good stuff, man. You Thank could. you. Likewise. Woo! Thank you. Best Hot practice. Dog. You heard it from the science of speed, dude. Brady. <laughs> right? With the jerseys right. behind him. That was his Olympic jersey he wore. Maybe not, but no, that's a national championship jersey. That's actually local, local hero, Pete Butler's jersey. Oh, Mr. Yeah. yeah. That's a whole nother level of speed right there. Mean Pete right there. Watch out. <laughs> mean Pete. Okay. So uh, audience look for this podcast. It'll be out soon. First episode, season two. Brady, I really enjoyed it. Great to catch up. I hope Likewise. to see you soon, whether it be this weekend at the marathon, half marathon, or the next event, coast, capital to coast, but whatever. Capital to coast, hopefully. Yeah, let's, yeah. let's, let's make it happen. All right, man. Take care of yourself and tell the missus hello and keep up the good work. Okay. Excellent. Thank you so much, Mickey. I appreciate it. See you, buddy. Bye. <laughs>